hello and welcome back to data news of the week the video where we take all the little dribs and drabs of news involving data that happened this week and squeeze it into a single video straight away first up this week let's talk about ukraine russia and everything that's going on there right now with data uh, the big companies involving data much like many of the big household names are pulling out of russia quite substantially and some of the big names in data finally within the last seven days or so have all started really pull, pulling out all at the same time amazon microsoft google ibm you name it they're on their way out from there i mean again pretty much all of them within the course of a week ones that already have vested interests there that have data centers in place have slowly started removing any dependence from their uh, new accounts being opened up are being suspended gradually over time and in the cases of where um, server and cloud supported services are available in certain regions such as the Amazon uh, uh, the AWS services there some of the government ones and even hardware providers at the likes of IBM Oracle and more that do hardware software combination solutions lots of those have been pulling out as well and we've seen lots and lots of that happening over the course of the last days if you look at some of the statements and the official tweets of some of them Microsoft are spending uh, new sales, for example, but also limiting a lot of their cloud services. Um, IBM and a lot of their actions towards a lot of existing uh, Russian businesses there. And Google, although um, allowing the existing infrastructure of accounts there to be to, be, to remain, uh, suspending any kind of new activity from Russian individual there to take advantage of any of their services, new account holders. And then a lot of their services uh, increased coverage and support in ukraine and again there's a lot of stuff there sadly about airstrike warnings and stuff like that built into their services and then finally there's a lot of talk there uh, about a lot of the kind of uh, government-led data that's in ukraine right now being taken out of the country uh, again this is from golem it is in german but it is a great little article that you can translate into english if you so choose and it goes into quite a lot of detail there um, based on reports from other services like routers about information that's coming out of that country before uh, kind of it all gets set upon by invading forces and taken away or adapted uh, for nefarious purposes down the line but ultimately it's good that a lot of these data services in such a heavily iconic and data age that we live in finally stepping in i would say some of the biggest players now in the world have completely turned their backs on russia and rightly so Good news for TerraMaster users with the official beta announcement and complete available download of TOS5, the latest version of their software and services for the TerraMaster NAS platform. It brings a lot of updates to the interactivity, the responsiveness, and indeed applications. And I would say, unlike my original um, overview of the TOS service, and I have talked about this beta being available in a previous news report, but I didn't go into a lot of detail about some of the stuff that's been added. They've now finally got their own AI powered photo recognition services they talked a lot about pets as well um, at the moment I'm currently indexing a lot of files on this system I will be doing a dedicated video on TOS 5 very shortly on top of that they've included a new surveillance platform again I'm getting things set up uh, for an overview of the TOS 5 latest beta I've already done a kind of alpha review already but this is the the, the beta that's available for everyone I think dot 50 and I'm going to be interested to see if there's any licensing difficulties, anything to do with um, IP cameras. Are they going to let you use as many cameras as you want and more? And when you make your way into the software, there's just lots more applications there. And they have their equivalents of a lot of the application from other service providers. So, for example, uh, they've got a now uh, enhanced synchronization tools there a whole system search functionality built in there. Uh, they've added that new security isolation mode that basically severs external connection uh, uh, via the internet to the NAS. But on top of that, also abandons a lot of Python and coding-based uh, services, effectively putting the system in a safe mode um, already built into that there. On top of that, then you've got the new log center, You've got the new security advisor as well. I've been running through a lot of my older system settings there. Then alongside the standard file manager, they've also got kind of a build-up equivalent towards Synology's drive application with synchronization across multiple client hardware. It's not sophisticated, I'll be honest, but still some great applications and services being included into an overall improved um, TerraMaster TOS 5 version. So do stay tuned when i do my full overview of this new beta update for the service hopefully coming in the next week or so
Next up, a couple of new products to keep an eye out for in the next week or two. Uh, from One from a brand that we're aware of and another one about a Kickstarter that I talked about on Twitter about a month and a bit ago. This is the Dot Case and it has made its way all the way through um, the initial stages of Kickstarter to availability very soon. It is an external M2 SSD adapter that not only has the standard support of um, USB 3.2 Gen 2, so that's uh, 1000 megabits, uh, megabytes per second connectivity. Um, but on top of that, it has an LCD panel built into it that gives you real-time information about the contents um, of this external tray without logging into your client hardware. On top of that, there's power loss protection support being built into it if we make our way into the campaign details. And they've been pretty upfront about this device um, on their Kickstarter page there and lots of promotion there on the big, big names as well in terms of people that are talking about this product. So again, I've had my eye on this for a while and I think I'm going to take the dip myself and get hold of all of these and review it for the channel because I think it's worth a look. And I think, although this isn't the first time we've seen external cases when LCD display, indeed, QNAP had one, the little Q Genie for a while. I think this thing, this takes things a little bit further with the power loss protection support and the ability to monitor things like partitions, uh, health and more on the drive. So definitely something to keep an eye on. But on top of that, keeping on the subject of M2 SSD storage, we can talk a little bit about Sabrent's new docking station there. This is a Thunderbolt dock that arrives with uh, multiple M2 NVMe SSD bays inside, and it allows connection via Thunderbolt 3 um, to uh, a docking station that only has that storage inside, but audio visual out, uh, USB 3.2 um, Gen 1 and Gen 2 ports, additional Thunderbolt ports there, it is quite a detailed little bit of kit there, and although the page is up on their official site detailing some of the storage options available at launch, I'm hoping uh, an empty version of it will arrive, because although I I, you know, I personally quite like Subrent M2 SSDs. I know some of you may have the odd one knocking around in a drawer somewhere you might want to take advantage of. But still, with Ethernet connectivity and additional ports kind of doubled up um, for uh, an SD card upgrade slot as well, it's a decent little portable docking station there. So I'm hoping we get one here in the studio. Otherwise, I am looking forward to talking about this and how it compares with things like the Fire Cuda Gaming Dock and some of those Sonic docking stations as well. Finally, it wouldn't be Data News of the Week if we weren't talking about a horrendous ransomware uh, event. And unfortunately, today I want to talk about another stage when it comes down to ransomware attacks. And something I think a lot of businesses can often forget about when they are hit by uh, ransomware. They're not just that you end up having to work with the attackers, but also that maybe you don't want to. And then your in your uh, end users, your client base can turn around and go... Uh, what do you mean you lost our data? Uh, what do you mean our data has been shared publicly online? And probably most embarrassingly of all, we have an example here, Tucker Solicitors, uh, that have now been fined uh, almost uh, a little over £100,000 over a ransomware attack. Uh, as you can see there, they're a criminal defense uh, firm there, but, uh, you know, a group of lawyers, an organization who were themselves fined for not taking sufficient practices to protect their data. So not only were they hit by the ransomware attack, um, but on top of that, they were forced to disclose that, as you can see there from the uh, Law Gazette article, uh, just shy of a million files um, were encrypted and a lot of them caught bundles there. So again, it's one of the overlooked factors for me when it comes down to ransomware attacks. If you're a business user that a lot of the time you may have clients who you know have a necessary right to complain that your practices may not have been up to snuff in 2022 with regards to how you house your data and how you protect it not just because that data can be lost ultimately and you know can have legal precedents for affecting um you know proceedings are uh, affecting things afterwards but on top of that just the simple fact that storing data has a lot more legal obligation than i think a lot of people um, have on board and I think the fact that a group of solicitors uh, you know an organization of solicitors here was kind of arguably by the looks of things unaware of that then it really does let you know just how far this rock goes but this has been data news of the week stay tuned for next week we've got a couple of new new products that things to talk about which I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys so do click subscribe take advantage of the free advice section but otherwise have yourselves a great weekend and I'll see you next time